Hello everyone, my name's Josh. I'm a mastering engineer at Viking Lounge Mastering and in this video, we're going to discuss, should you worry about true peak levels? Firstly, let's go through some definitions. True peaks are the absolute highest point that an audio signal reaches, including intersample peaks. Intersample peaks are created between digital samples when the audio is converted from digital to analog. For example, during playback. As we are all aware from our DAWs, digital audio has a peak level of zero dB. Digital audio is also defined by samples, which determine the shape of our wave. Let's say in our DAW, we have a limiter and the ceiling is set at zero. We then push our track hard into this limiter and that will pretty much mean that there are a bunch of samples that are close or at zero. However, when this digital signal is converted to analog, it can actually be recreated over this. And when peaks are created over the samples, then this is an intersample peak. And this is basically why peaks can appear above our limiter ceiling. Let's go through three points on why true peaks above zero should be avoided. One, you don't want to distort or clip your playback device. The limit is zero and therefore they just can't handle level that's over that. Point number two, if you're releasing your music on streaming platforms and most music is these days and your files has true peaks above zero, then the encoders are going to struggle. Basically, when we upload our files to streaming platforms, they need to encode our music to a smaller file type that's basically easier to be streamable. And there are a bunch of things that we can do to help these encoders create the highest quality file. Having peaks above zero is not one of them. <laughs> and point number three, it's very, very, very easy to avoid. So just do it. Now let's go through how to avoid true peaks above zero. Pretty much two ways. Way number one, use a true peak limiter and set your ceiling below zero. Personally, I set mine at minus 0.3 and that just gives me a little buffer between zero and my track. Now, to be fair, true peak limiters do sound slightly different to non-true peak limiters. For example, I find the FabFilter Pro L2, which a lot of you are probably familiar on, I find that when I turn that true peak limiter switch off, the tracks can generally open up and sound a little bit bigger, usually a kind of less processed sound. Second way to avoid true peaks above zero is just set your ceiling at a point where there can't be true peaks above zero. Usually minus 0.3 dBs like what I do is enough, but for some reason, if you're still having true peaks above zero at minus 0.3, I'd probably like back off on the limiting, but that's a whole different video that will change the sound of the actual audio. But what you can do is just drop your ceiling a little bit further to something like minus 0.4. But Josh, I thought I was supposed to set my ceiling at minus one for streaming platforms. Now streaming platforms recommend this blanket statement to everybody just to avoid encoder clipping and to make a high quality encoding. So if we can create a high quality encoding with our ceiling higher, then we're actually utilizing more of the dynamic range of our file. Pretty nerdy stuff and a pretty small little detail, but you know me, that's what I'm all about. I'm about the nuance and the small details that add up to the bigger picture. But Josh, some high-end pros masters peak above zero. Why can't I do that? I don't know why I give that character such a whingy voice. <laughs> I mean, you can, you can do that. No one's stopping you from doing that. There's no true peak police that's gonna come arrest you. But what I have to say to that is, let's put into practice what we learned as kids. Just because someone else is doing something doesn't mean you should too. I know a bunch of pros that are doing what I'm doing as well. And I would much prefer to use my own brain and my own logic and do what makes sense to me. My opinion is that avoiding true peaks above zero is just good form. It's just best practice for the delivery medium. And it allows me to know that my music is gonna sound as good as I could make it where it's being distributed. And it's so, so easy to do, so. I don't know why you wouldn't. Now, if you think having a limiter ceiling right up at zero instead of backing it off a few tenths of a dB, <laughs> I'd ask you to reconsider. I think that's a bad idea. I think at that point, you're just prioritizing very slight loudness over quality loss. And pretty much you're just not delivering within the specs of the file type. So just, just don't, don't do that. Don't do that at all. Just never. All right, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. Pretty nerdy topic today. Um, if you want to check out some of my mastering work, you can head to my website in the description below, joshbartellmastering.com. 
There's a contact form at the bottom as well if you'd like to work together. Otherwise, thank you for making it to all the way to the end of this video. I appreciate you and remember to use your ears.